We are live right now. This is the Total OS Today Show, number four, I believe, right here on the very nice, very family-friendly Linux distro community dot com. Now, this is the home of the Arch Linux refugees. Uh, Spatry, are you familiar with the uh, with that wonderful rock band, uh, Tom Petty and the Arch Breakers? <laughs> you are absolutely nuts. But I did give somebody my condolences for wanting to try out Arch earlier this evening. And, uh, you know, um, I saw a video, somebody uh, doing an install. It doesn't look all that bad. I will eventually get to uh, trying it, but right now Gentoo is next on the plate, so it is what it is. Yes, it is the Portable Planet, and we've got Nancora, Oscult, Pingcast, Sieve Car, Sneaky Linux. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, myself, Total West Today, and William Generic. Back to you, Total West Today. Thank you, Spatry. Yes. Okay, we are talking about the A Portable Planet, the portable communications. We'll be talking a little bit about smartphones, tablets, netbooks, laptops, and, and, in, and in pre show chat, somebody mentioned Ultra Books. So we may even sneak that in too. All right, what I'll do is let me get started on the uh, on tablets, netbooks, and laptops. Just a brief description of each, and then we'll just go down the list as far as guests go. Of course, you're welcome to chime in about smartphones and ultrabooks also. All right, first up, we have tablets. Uh, tablets are generally 7 to 10 inch. They have a 7 to 10 inch touchscreen interface. They are terrific for reading uh, ebooks. They use it. They utilize um, smartphone operating systems technology such as Android and iOS. They have integrated Wi-Fi, and of course, you can browse the web and play games. Next up are netbooks. Now, these are going to be a little bit larger, usually up to a 12-inch uh, screen size. They are a clamshell type of design. They have a physical QWERTY keyboard. And I, I think the first netbook, Spatch, we have talked about this briefly before. I think at one time they both had, uh, some of these were had the capability to dual boot Windows XP and Linux. And they generally have a longer battery life than laptops. And finally, well not finally, but the next thing on my lips, uh, list, not lips, uh, would be laptops. Now these are the, larger, the largest of the three uh, communication technologies here. Now these, the current state of laptops, I believe they can go as big as 18 inches, which I guess is terrific for gaming, watching movies, and multitasking. Unlike tablets and netbooks, netbooks they do have built-in uh, DVD, Blu-ray, or CD drives. Uh, they have a full physical QWERTY keyboard. Uh, the one nice thing about laptops, they generally, you can put in a lot more uh, media on your hard drive. I think they max out at, a, at 100, uh, I'm sorry, 750 gigabytes, although, although at today's stage, there may be more than that. So let's go down the list here. Nankura, what can you tell us? What are your opinions about portable technology? Well, basically, um, I think portable technology is a, is has been quite a break uh, breakthrough from the old phone and cord. Like, I mean, I remember back when I was a kid, I used to have to dr drag the phone and the cord to the couch just to, just to sit, uh, sit down and listen or talk uh, with the conversation. So it's it's, it's definitely um, an I innovation and a step forward in technology. Oscult. Yeah, handheld devices are. The, the future, as people say, in this day and age, people are moving about. So we can't be hogging along our big desktops with our graphics cards and coolants. And we can't do it. So we need uh, smaller devices. And we have the mobile phones, the iPads, the Kindles, the laptops. And mobility is great. Without it, there wouldn't be a lot of people who could do their jobs. A lot of people need handheld devices to do their jobs, so for that reason, I love handheld devices. Pincas. Ah, oh, man, the dark ages of portable technology, the, uh, the cord and the phone. I remember those days. Uh, how times have changed. Now our, now our phones can bake pancakes for us. Oh, it's, I remember my uh, first uh, cell phone. It was A Game Boy was more advanced than it. And now we got <laughs> now we got these iPhones and everything. It's really awesome. 
I do remember my first cordless phone. It was it was white and it had a big long like boombox silver or, or long antenna on it. And I, I think my first cell phone was was one built by N. EC and I would say it was half a brick, not a full brick. But yes, technology has come along. <laughs> oh, the brick! I remember those those cell phones. They look like a, uh, I don't know. They look like a miniature version of those uh, phones that they uh, had in all the uh, war movies and everything. Uh, they were ridiculous looking. Yes, I am reminded of that song. Some of you guys may be too young, but uh, Spatch, you remember the song? Oh, she's a brick house. I remember. Yes. <laughs> I remember the Commodores. Sneaky, exactly. That's exactly who it was. Okay, let's see. Let's move down the list here. CV Car, you're up. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> with today's new technology, it's really developing something quite amazing. Uh, canonical with Ubuntu for Android is actually they're taking a small mobile, well, high-end mobile device and turning it into a desktop, giving incredible functionality to just your ordinary high-end smartphone. Cool. Sneaky. Oh, my God. Bit an old bloke. I haven't had my stuff on myself all the time, and I can get it anywhere I want to via my phone, my tablet. Okay, not Apple. <laughs> Ding. But yeah, I can get anywhere I want to, if I want to, when I want to. You guys are so, so lucky. I remember the old days, just want to put this out there, when I, when I was a gamer, I used to go to my mate's place, I remember the hell of having to put the computer in the car, tie it up, the monitor, and drive everything over, get it out. It was just a pain. <laughs> now, now is just... It's, like, it's in your hand. Everything is in your hand. And for somebody like me, who's quite a lot older than most of you, maybe not some of you, but I can get everything in my hand. I can go down and get me emails, anything else. Oh, well, the wife and that can't do it because they're, you know, they're not doing that sort of stuff. But all my kids just do it all the time. they all got Nexus tabs now. I bought them for their presents for this year. So, lovely. Hmm. All right. Um, I... Uh... I remember when those netbooks came out. I was working at uh, QVC, all places, you know, the home shopping network, that sort of thing, and they were advertising those yep. on TV and that sort of thing. And it's funny, somebody mentioned about having to put their computer in their car. I remember when I moved down here to Florida from Wisconsin, I had a uh, IBM ThinkPad. It was a uh, single core uh, 233 megahertz machine. I had my, uh, I had my, C Honda CRX so loaded with stuff I couldn't see out the back windows. So what I did was I actually hooked up a webcam and I had that out pointing out the back window of the car and I had the laptop in front with me so that I could see behind me in the car because I had it so loaded up. I, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. <laughs> I did. I had this I had this notebook set up. Oh my goodness. Don't ask me how I pulled that one off but it's really amazing to see uh, how the uh, netbooks themselves evolved because the first models that came out I think they only had like four gigs of um, SSD RAM in them and uh, my uh, most recent netbook that I had that had a 150 gigabyte hard drive and it was very well capable of dual booting uh, both Windows 7 and uh, Linux, which is really interesting. And so, I mean, in my opinion, I think netbooks are pretty much full-featured computers minus the optical drive, um, which you can easily get. You can plug one into the USB and that sort of thing. But also, my experience with the netbooks are is pretty much they're cheaply built, you know. And, uh, you know, this kind of technology, obviously, it's priced at a low uh, price level because obviously it's not going to last as long as something that you would buy uh, that would maybe that you would maybe get five or six years out of. So pretty much every all these things are priced at a disposable level, you know. Boy, it sure seems that way. William, what can you tell us? I've seen portable computers, but mainly the laptop. All I had to do is take mainly the laptops is what of one of my least things. 
because it doesn't plug everything, you have to put everything in a bag and take it on the go, but a smaller computer will do just fine quickly. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about this. I just picked up my very first uh, tablet, a 7-inch pan digital tablet, and we will probably do a future show just on tablets. But one thing I noticed about the tablets, even if you have a full-featured expensive tablet, I don't think it's a replacement for a full featured desktop especially doing uh, especially doing the things that we do you know multimedia and stuff like that so I think as far as tablets go I think it's more as oh probably more as an accessory to what you have the one thing I do like about tablets is it has much better battery life than a any smartphone so for example if you do a lot of texting or play music or browsing the web in my opinion I think a tablet is the way to go versus a uh, smartphone. Spatry, you have uh, we 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 spoke about this before, but do you use your smartphone a lot, or mainly just for talking, Spatry? I uh, I have an application for just about everything on it, and it could actually qualify as almost like a uh, personal computer. As a matter of fact, I have two of them. I still have my old uh, Windows uh, mobile phone, which uh, is an HTC Excalibur. And uh, believe it or not, I actually have DOS running on that thing, and I've got old DOS games running uh, on that handheld. And, I mean, <laughs> it's funny because, I mean, it's like having a small little handheld computer. And then, of course, the Android, uh, that one, uh, yeah, I've got tons of applications. So, I mean, not only do I uh, use it for calls, I also play music on it. I play games on it. It's great to take with me if I'm sitting in the doctor's office for a while and I've got time to kill, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting. At least I might I might as well occupy my mind. But are these uh, portable devices good for uh, doing other things such as multimedia and that sort? Uh, while they do have the capabilities to record uh, multimedia and film and that sort of thing, really not at a good quality and you you really can't do much in terms of video or graphics editing on them you really need a desktop so yes it's it's great to have to complement the hardware that you already have at home but really insufficient for uh, doing uh, much else totally agree Spatry. I use uh, on the, in the past few days here I use my tablet mainly to check email and to play music for hours and hours because of the the uh, the battery life at least in the tablet I have just playing music with the Wi-Fi off I can probably squeeze out between six to eight hours for this rather inexpensive tablet that I bought yeah easy. right yeah you could easily um, uh, I you know uh, on my device there was a t there was a job I was uh, working where I was allowed to wear headphones all day and I mean, I would listen to music for eight hours nonstop, and I would still have more than half of my battery power left over at the end of the day. So, I mean, uh, the, yeah, the battery power is really great on those devices. But just something to keep in mind when you're, when you're uh, using a device in such a manner, it is wise to shut off Wi-Fi. Yes. Because that does eat up a lot of battery power, and you want to uh, there there is a um, there is a program for that called Juice, I think, or something like that, uh, that will allow you to manage uh, the uh, that you have running, so that you can get longer battery life out of those handheld devices. So I highly recommend you check that out. It's in the Android store somewhere. Cool. Thank you, um, Sneaky. Did you say that you have a tablet? Yeah, we have four tablets in the house, and in my personal opinion, and some of you may not like this, they are, at the end of the day, just media devices. They are not full-blown computers, okay? You can check your Facebook, you can do stuff, you can send emails, you can do basic stuff, but can you do anything else? At the end of the day, unless you've got a Tegra 3 with the four cores, not really. Yeah, I would have to agree. The new hot-selling tablet is, is the Google Nexus uh, 7 tablet. I believe that is a quad-core, so that can probably do a little bit more than a standard generic tablet. But as far as a full-blown computer system sneaky, I think I'll stick with my uh, desktop here. Now, in um, before in pre-chat, some of us had talked about, I'm not sure who it was, if it was Nankura, Oscalt, or Pincast. One of you had mentioned that one member of your family or two didn't like all this technology. Who mentioned that? Uh, that was actually me. It was, it was actually a friend of mine, a really close friend. And um, she's about 34 years old. 
and uh, she uh, like she she had a smartphone for a while and she was using it and then she, one day she had her old phone. I was like, what? What happened to your smartphone? She goes, I don't like it. I don't like having to go into the menus, press buttons, touch the screen. She said it's just too complicated. She said she actually found her old little Samsung a lot easier. So I guess the question is, guys, it, when is technology as cool and as fun as it is? When is it? When does it become a little bit too much? Well, I was going to say also a lot for that one because he is the uh, terminal guy. <laughs> Uh, when is technology going to be too much? I suppose when we start having uh, uh, biomedical implants put in, and uh, the next thing you know, I mean, I, I've seen the Google HUD, for instance, which is these glasses now. I guess they're um, Bluetooth or something like that, which now will give you a heads-up display and that sort of thing. But I, I, I can, I can just see it in the coming years. They're going to start having implants and. You know, people are just going to be uh, tapping the side of their head or something like that and, you know, getting phone calls and that sort of thing. And uh, I don't know, but um, uh, I, I really don't know how to best answer that question. I, I think, uh, um, you know, there is a lot of good technologies out there, but the thing is also uh, they can be abused as well. Too true, mate. Too true. Yes, I, I know Spatry's waiting for the combination smartwatch, shaver, clipper, toaster, and all that, right? Yeah, we've got the prototypes lying around here somewhere, don't we? <laughs> don't you dare turn that on, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, William, can you add something else to this? Well, unfortunately, I think pretty much technology is very good and handy but I think just there should be some minor adjustments to the technology part such as like we shouldn't really have to have a heads up display thing like we really shouldn't I mean kiosks or something that has the Google like not literally like Google heads up display is something that we don't have to wear on our heads but something we can just walk up to and touch whoa 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 yeah sneaky well, I just bought a new car, right? And I know you're going to slag me off it. I just bought a new Prius plug-in, okay? And I've got a head-up cool. display on my car, okay? It's head-up on my windscreen, and I can do anything from my windscreen without looking down from my stuff, you know what I'm saying? Sneaky is the car, then, the features of the car, so you would say it's very user-friendly? Well, no, it's not just that. It's just when I'm driving the car, I know a lot of you won't like it because I bought a Prius and it starts saving the wheel, blah, 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 blah. But when I'm driving, everything is on the windscreen. I don't have to look down. And I'm, do you know what I'm saying? So it's practical, right? Very. Nothing wrong with that. So you are basically a safer driver, yes? Of course, and I'll get 135 miles to the gallon. Now, that's my kind of car. I hate gas stations, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, my point here is, though, um, yeah, they do have these heads-up displays, and these things, um, you can actually turn your head. They have GPS and all this other stuff back in them, you know, in them and that sort of thing. And, you know, I think, I think we have enough technology out there that can easily distract people. Okay, we hear of people, for instance, texting and driving. And all the accidents and everything that is causing on a yearly basis. I mean, uh, te where, where they're bringing in uh, technologies that are introducing distraction is, a, is, a, is really a bad thing, in my opinion. I'll get what you're saying, Spats. I'll get what you're saying. But what all I'm saying in the car I've just bought is there's nothing distracted. It's all in what I'm looking at. I don't have to look down, look side, look up. I don't even have to look down to what button I'm pressing on my steering wheel because it's all in my display on my screen. If you get go down to your local dealer, I won't say what manufacturer it is, but you know it is, you'll see what I mean. It's fantastic. It's the best £28,000 I've ever spent. Sneaky, let me just say that... Uh the kind of car that you have, I don't, I mean, I have a Toyota, I, I love Toyota products in general, but the, the kind of car, the kind of car technology, technology that you have, I would accept that as a safer way to drive than trying to hold your phone and or text, which to me is, you know, almost suicide. But the, te the technology that you have where your eyes are still on the road, I would accept that as a safer way to drive than what some people do 
versus driving and and in combination trying to hold a handheld device and talk and text. That's just to me. That's just completely nuts. Enough well, said. Mate. Enough well, said. Well, thankfully here in the UK, at least, if you use your mobile phone at all, at all you're going to get yourself a hefty fine. It's the oh, same in Australia. One, it's a big one here now. Yeah, it's the same one. It's the same in Australia. We're really cracking down on people using phones. You really cop it. People are even copping jail time now for using phones in their cars because whether it's handheld, whether you're holding it in your hands, or whether you've got an earset on, no matter what you're doing with that phone, you're talking to someone and you're distracted. It's a distraction and it's very unnecessary, and it causes a lot of unnecessary accidents. I agree. Too true. I agree with that, and there are states here in the United States where uh, they actually have signs by the roadside saying if you must take a call, pull over by the side of the road and take your call. Alternatively, there is a a toy called the Jupiter Jack that you can plug into your phone, and uh, it comes in through the uh, radio, and you can talk hands-free on your device. And some cars actually have that technology already built in with Bluetooth so that you don't have a phone in your hand distracting you. Because obviously, you know, you could have passengers in your vehicle and you're holding a conversation. I mean, that would, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that they should be, you know, arresting and fining people because they're having a conversation. Because you could be just as dra- distracted by a conversation with a live human being sitting in your car, yes. just as much as, yes. just as much as if you're talking on the phone. But the, I think the point here is that you do not have the device in your hand at all, and you are controlling it maybe from your steering wheel or something like that, where you push a button, it interacts with the Bluetooth interface, and you're able to take that call. That's perfectly fine. And that's just what happens in my car at the moment. You know what I'm saying? So the car syncs with Bluetooth to your phone, yes? Yeah, it syncs my Bluetooth to my phone. <clears throat> do your music through it. You don't take your hands off the steering wheel. It's all on the steering wheel. You don't even have to look at the steering wheel because when you touch the buttons on the steering wheel, it comes up in the head-up display. Nice, nice. Now that is cool. I want one. Yeah, Sneaky's go got... Take, the... Go take a test drive at your local T dealer, a Japanese one. You know what I'm saying. Uh, Sneaky, are you getting admission for these? <laughs> I wish it was my own cash, but me and Sneaky wife have said we want to you know, try and save the planet, you know, a bit less CO2. We've got a big family, we need a bigger car. But, you know, I can do 30... Well, sorry, <clears throat> I'll say it again. I can do 15 miles on electric... Uh, power only, then it goes into the synergy mode where it saves petrol and stuff like that, or gas as you say. Right. Sneak, you have a quick question about the car. Would the car have room enough for a six foot two driver like myself? Yeah, my son can drive it and he's six foot five. Nice. I'll have to keep that in mind when I go shopping again. All right, we are close to the end here and I wanted to end the show on the future of portable communication or portable technology and I was actually going to mention uh, car technology and communications and since we are on the topic let's just finish it with the future of technology I guess in cars sneaky touched on it I totally agree that most of us well a lot of us constantly talking more as we are driving and as Patrick said it's easy to get distract and now before I move down the list here uh, of guests to close out the show all I can say is if you're driving don't call don't text unless you have a safe car like what sneaky has if you are in the car with the passenger hand hand off the phone to the passenger let them take the call and or text if it's that important period all right, William, what do you think is the future of portable communications? Well, I think future, portable future ones are the ultrabooks, like ones that are portable and lightweight is all I've got to say for this one. Okay, yeah, I think I think Apple has come out with ultra-thin laptops that I think they are in the class of ultra uh, books or ultra laptops with longer battery life, and of course they are lightweight. Uh, Nankura, what do you have to say? Uh, pretty much everything I need to and I uh, have an opinion on. Okay, ask Alt. A device that can do everything, so it can call music, just the device 
not just a laptop that you know you can't do certain things on. Just a device that can do everything. Pink ass. Uh, I think it's kind of what Oscar said. A uh, device that can do everything, but the more portable, the better. So basically, we're in that. I guess most people are just all right with a portable piece of technology and doing anything too too major. So most people are all right with a tablet or a smartphone or a little netbook. So portable is the uh, way to go. Lovely. Like, just do what you want to do. I love new netbooks. I love tablets. But they are only for, uh, only for certain stuff, okay? If you want to do real work on real computers, like what we're doing now, like video converting and stuff like that, you need a real computer. But on the other hand... I love my Prius plugin. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Sneaky. Spatry, didn't we once talk about uh, a high tech Google car? Wasn't that us talking about it like a few months ago? Huh. Uh, I, I know we talked about the heads up display, but here's my take on the future uh, technology. Um, how about, how about um, implants that go in the eye? You know, ocular and neural interface that's powered by your body. Uh, to provide, you know, everything self-contained, you know, no no external units, all uh, implanted, and that sort of thing, uh, enough to cause distractions in your everyday life. And, of course, for those that can't afford those ocular implants, there will be, uh, there will be uh, vending machines where you can just a credit card, and uh, it will, you'll have, have a sheet of paper that you can pull out and just rip the cover off and then... You know, and then it'll be a throwaway cell phone that you can talk, you know, pass your message and everything, and then just crumble it up and throw it away. So the next time I go to my local vending machine, I'll pick up my candy bar, my can of uh, soda drink, and my extra piece of communication technology, right? Exactly. Yeah, you just pull, you know, it'll, it'll, I saw this in a movie somewhere where somebody, you know, inserted their credit card into a machine, and it looked like a payphone thing. And they got this little piece of paper that came out, and they just pulled the thing off, and then just dialed, made their phone call, and then threw the phone away. <laughs> you know, there's there's a there's a new movie out a a redo or an updated version of the movie Total Recall, and maybe they should make a movie called Total Distraction. <laughs> I think. That that's exactly what it is, though. Lots of good technology out there, but too much technology out there to distract people. And that's I, I used to build my own desktop computers, and now I just found it's just cheap by a decent laptop. You know, so pretty much uh, that's where I'm, where I'm sitting on it. You know. Well, let me end this by saying that too much of anything is not necessarily a good thing. Gentlemen, our time is up for this discussion. Thank you all for joining me. Nankura, Oscalt, Pincast, CV Car, Sneaky Linux, Battery, of course, myself, Toss Today, and William Generic. This has been, hopefully, an enlightening discussion on portable communications, uh, past, present, and future. Personally, I can't wait to see what the future holds. I think this is probably the tip of the iceberg and I hope it turns out to be more good than distraction if you know don't know what I mean gentlemen thank you always uh, Spatry thank you always and thank you for coming in tonight I know you are tired so we will end this now for all of you listening join us every Sunday night on the live Total OS Today show don't forget every Saturday night is Spatry's Zoo Crew and I like to end this show as I do all of my uh, uploads here to the here to the or, or to the YouTube uh, channel. Thank you all for watching and listening, and we will catch all of you sometime in the future. Ciao.